Hello, the internet. Today I've got three things to talk about. Four, maybe? First, I want to talk about the sad gap. This is this idea that there is a gap between when you know there's a huge problem and when you know what to do about it. And that can be pretty miserable. And I think that social media, in particular, tends to encourage people to stay in the sad gap and consume more downer content and doom scroll and not take the next step, focus on one problem, and contribute, however small, to solving it. And, you know, that's, that's, that's the solution, I think, is to stop feeling bad about all the problems, pick one, learn as much as possible about it, and do whatever small thing we can. So one example that I take heart from is when I see scientific research about subjects that I find interesting and just how deep researchers get into learning about those specific subjects. It inspires me to get in deeper into my own subject. Thing two, the sodium ion battery paper really fascinates me because one, it's just another example of this phenomenon, people digging deep into some subject really learning about it and trying to solve it and it contributes to the greater problem of energy storage and renewable energy and stationary storage that i'm really concerned about so i love this paper because they took the problem of why do our battery electrodes fail and they said well they must be something about the synthesis because we know if we synthesize them differently they run better or worse, but what specifically about how we synthesize them is good or bad. And so they put their furnace that has to heat to a thousand degrees plus in the beam of a powerful x-ray source and x-rayed their sample while they were synthesizing it at these high temperatures. Like, what a brilliant idea. It's like, well, we don't know what's happening during the synthesis. Well, let's just x-ray it during the synthesis. Let's not worry about trying to make lots of different trials and sort it out afterward. Let's just get real-time measurements. Absolutely brilliant, so cool. They found that under certain circumstances, they could correlate the features they were seeing in the x-rays with catastrophic failures during charging and discharging. They call them earthquakes, which is great. Uh, electrode quakes, I guess. And, uh, and yeah, that now they have an insight into how they can start to solve them. Sodium ion batteries are a longer term battery solution, but I love it. Here, look at all that pervert seltzer. Yeah, I'm gonna that up. Look, just to be clear, I am sorry to use the term pervert seltzer. Um, that I, I should not judge. Um, you know, that's not nice. I'm sure that many perverts don't drink White Claw. I'm just kidding. I love this little part of the stream here. I saw a heron catch a fish right in here. I thought it was pretty cool. So thing three. This year, they have solved the chemical structure of bismuth salicylate trade name Pepto-Bismol. For 100 years, this has been a medicine in use, and now, finally, we have a structure. The mechanism, I think, is still kind of unknown. But the structure of the chemical was really hard to solve, and new tools had to be invented to use it. They used electron microscopy to get insights and uh, structural modeling, and they finally have a chemical structure for this. The reason it's so difficult is it, kind of hard to explain, but I'll try Imagine that you're making a multi-layer sandwich. You can go peanut butter, bread, peanut butter, bread, peanut butter, bread. And it's layered like that. That's pretty straightforward. But imagine that each layer of bread could be toasted on one side. Now each bread can be toast up or toast down. And that's just random. And that makes this disorder that's really hard to figure out what the average structure is. Because sometimes you'll get a bunch of toast side up layers. And sometimes you get random toast side up, toast side down alternating and the whole thing averages out to just a mess. So anyway, <laughs> I think it's really cool that they've solved it. This was a mystery I didn't even know existed, and now it is solved. And I guess that's what makes me so tickled about these sorts of scientific stories, that somebody saw that that rabbit hole went really deep, and they kept digging till they found a solution, and that inspires me to keep digging on the projects that I'm working on. And finally, I, I did make a comic this week 
Uh, so the story is true. Uh, in graduate school, um, I uh, made a fresh pot of coffee and the little coffee maker alarm went off, beep, beep, told me I needed to go get uh, my coffee pot. And one of the graduate students in, in the office with me said, what's that beeping? I said, ah, that's my coffee pot. Time for a fresh, fresh batch. And he said, well, isn't that your coffee pot on your desk there? I, so it is, yes, yes it is. Uh, that beeping means I have a mess to go clean up. <laughs> the coffee had overflowed all over the office and the counter on the floor, it's just a huge mess. But uh, I tried to draw this myself. Um, I used Storyboard That, which is a little software to, to make a storyboard, a little mock-up. And it looks fine, it's kind of generic art, but when I tried to draw it uh, without hiring an actual cartoonist, it didn't go so well. But you know, we try. It's fun. Anyway, thanks for tuning in. I hope you, uh, hope you all have a great week and we will see you next time.